today I want to focus on something not too distantly related to what we talked about last time. Last time we talked about rational inequalities, this time we're going to talk about rational equations. So this lesson, much like the last lesson, is going to require us to use least common denominator. Um, so if you feel like you need a review of that, please go back and visit that last lesson on rational inequalities. It's right at the beginning. Um, I'm going to assume that we're feeling pretty comfortable with that. So instead of starting off with a review, I'm going to start off with some steps on how to solve rational equations. Um, it's actually not as similar to rational inequalities as you would think. We're going to use um, sort of this technique that makes it easier to work with, but it's gonna be not the same. So one, we wanna bring everything to one side. Bring everything to one side of the equation. Um, second part, we wanna factor all denominators. This already is sort of deviating from our steps from last time, right? We do, um, for both, bring everything to one side, but um, before our first step was to combine everything. Here, we don't want to combine. We just want to factor. The reason we are going to factor is that we need to find all restricted values. Um, these are just where uh, any denominator is zero. Um, then from all those factors in the denominator, we want to find the LCD. Once we find the LCD, we want to multiply each term by the LCD um, to eliminate fractions. And last but not least, We want to solve um, the way we want to do this now that we've eliminated the fractions right we're undoing the dividing that the denominator is doing right um, you'll see what happens but uh, in order to solve we need to distribute um, which will sometimes mean foil Uh, we want to combine like terms. And factor. Right, in order to solve, we have to factor. We have to um, distribute everything that's there combine all the like terms, and then factor. That's the only way we can solve these guys. And actually, I faked you guys out when I said that number six was the last one. Um, number seven, we actually need to check for restrictive values after we solve. So if any solution is also a restricted value it is called an extraneous solution so let's go ahead and use these steps to solve one of these So, number one, our first step that we 
had was to bring everything over to one side. Which means we bring that 4 over, we set it equal to 0. Now that it's over to one side, we want to factor, right? But all of these guys are factored, right? We can see all the factors of the denominator except for this one, right? But we know that this whole denominator is just 1, so that's the factor. So where are the restricted values? Well, we've got 1 in this denominator at negative 3, and we've got 1 in this denominator at 0. So now let's go ahead and find our least common denominator. That's the next step. Well, I look at the first part. I have a denominator of t plus 3. We want to collect that whole factor. Then I look at the next one. I've got a factor of t that's not included yet, so I multiply that on. And then this last one, what is the denominator here? 1, right? The denominator is like a silent 1. So we can multiply this by 1, but it'll just be the same thing. So our whole least common denominator is t plus 3 times t. So now we want to multiply each of these factors here. We want to multiply this whole equation by t plus 3 times t. times this first guy. Same thing, whole LCD times this second guy. And then same thing, whole LCD times four. Oh, this should be minus. Equals zero. Okay, so Right? The whole point of doing this was so that we could eliminate the denominator. So when I multiply this fraction, this 2 over t plus 3 times t plus 3, right? This dividing by t plus 3 cancels with this multiplying by t plus 3, so that cancels. Here, I can reduce as well with these t's for the same reason, right? I multiply times t, I divide times t. Multiplication and division undo each other, so these guys are reduced. And then here, we don't really cancel with anything because this denominator is 1, but that's totally fine. We can just distribute. So let's do this multiplication. Here it looks like I get 2t. Here it looks like I'm left with minus 4 times t plus 3. And then here we've got minus t plus 3 times t times 4. That's a whole handful, but that's fine. I'm going to write it in a different order. I'm going to write it 4 times t times t plus 3. And all of this is still equal to 0. Now I continue to simplify. This guy is good to go. Minus 4, we want to distribute to both t and plus 3. So we get minus 4t minus 12. And then over here, we distribute both of these guys in here. So we get 4t times t. So minus 4t times t is just t squared. And then minus 4 times t times 3. So minus 12t equals 0. Now I combine like terms. Let's write this t squared first, right? There's no other like terms to combine with. So we just get negative 4t squared. Um, with all these t's, looks like I've got a positive 2, negative 4, and negative 12. If I add those all together, I get negative 14t. And then um, the only constant term we have is that negative 12. So now I've got to solve this, right? Solving means factoring. So when I factor this out, let me move this over here so I can do it with a little bit more space. So what all of these terms have in common? Well, they've definitely got a negative 2, right? So if I factor a 2 out of each of these, I'm left with 2t squared plus 7t plus 6, right? If I factor this, I get 2t plus 3 times t plus 2 is 0. 
And then when I find the roots of these guys, right, I get 2t plus 3 equals 0. So 2t is negative 3, which means that t equals negative 1.5. And then here I get t equals negative 2. Are either of these restricted values? Well, our restricted values are 3 and 0, right? Neither of these are 3 or 0, so both of them are correct answers here. Let's try number 2. What is our restricted value here? Well, let's look at this one. Is this ever going to be undefined? Is this ever going to be equal to 0? No, 4 is never going to be equal to 0. There's no x value that can make 4 equal to 0, right? Here, what x value will give me 0? Negative 1. Is there anything here that will give me 0? No, 2 will never be 0, so my only restricted value is negative 1. What is my LCD here? This first one is just a 4. That's the only factor we have, so we can include it. Over here, our next guy, we've got x plus 1. That hasn't been included before, so we bring that guy over. Oh, x plus 1. Now this guy, do we have a factor of 2 already? There's not clearly one there, right? It's not clear, right? We don't have a 2 here. But we actually have a factor of 2 built into this 4, right? 2 is a factor of 4. So we actually can just leave it with 4. So my least common denominator here is 4 times x plus 1. OK, so we found all that stuff. I forgot to bring all this over. So let me bring all this over real quick. We start with 3x minus 1 over 4 plus 4 over x plus 1 minus 5 over 2. Okay, now we multiply by the LCD. Oops, I wrote the term first, but that's okay. Totally fine. Okay, so what cancels here in this first term? Four cancels. What cancels here in the second term? X plus one. And in this last one, this 2 can reduce with the 4, right? If we divide 4, which is on top, right, by 2, we're just left with 2. So let's write what's left. Looks like we're left with x plus 1 times 3x minus 1 plus 4 times 4, so 16, minus 2 times x plus 1 times 5. And we want to figure out where all of this equals 0. Well, let's start combining. So we've got to foil out this guy. So we get 3x squared plus 3x minus 3x minus 1 plus 16 minus 10x minus 10. We combine like terms, we get 3x squared. Oh, sorry, this is a minus x. So then we have positive 3x minus x minus 10x. So this actually is minus 8x. So 3x squared minus 8x plus negative 1 plus 16 plus 5 equals 0. I can factor this. This turns into 
3 x minus 5 and x minus 1. If you need help with that, I would recommend um, looking on YouTube uh, for factoring trinomials where a is greater than 1. If you look up Khan Academy AC method factoring and you um, go to the video from Khan Academy called More Examples of Factoring by Grouping, um, that gives you a nice idea of how to work with something like this um, if you don't use the trial and error method. So where are these equal to zero? What are the roots here? Well, we've got to set this equal to zero. Looks like I've got five thirds. And then this guy, looks like I've got a root of one. Neither of these are restrictive values, right? We've got one, not negative one, so we are good. So both of these are the solutions. What this means is that if I were to plug either of these x values in, this would give us um, a true equation. So we'd get the same number on this side as on this side. So let's bring everything over to one side. How can I factor this denominator here? Well, both terms have a z, so if I factor out a z from both of them, I'm left with z plus 1. So what are my restricted values here? Well, z plus 1 gives us a restricted value of negative 1. Z gives us a restricted value of 0. And then Z squared plus Z, we've got these two factors, um, the same guys, right? We have a factor of Z, which means that we have a root of 0, and we have a factor of Z plus 1, which means we have negative 1. So we are good. Um, what is our LCD? Well, we look here, we see we collect that Z plus 1. We look here, we collect that Z. We look here, right, we don't have a denominator. We look here, we have a factor of z and z plus 1, both of which we have already. So our LCD here is good. Let's multiply every term by the LCD. So we get z plus 1 times z times 3z over z plus 1 plus z plus 1 times z times 2 over z plus z plus 1 times z times 5 minus z plus 1 times z times 3 over z plus 1 times z. That was so long, um, but it's over. So what cancels here? z squared. What cancels here? z. Nothing cancels here, right? We don't have a denominator. And both factors cancel here. So what am I left with? Looks like I'm left with 3z squared plus 2 times z plus 1 plus 5 z times z plus 1 minus 3. I distribute. I get 3z squared plus 2z plus 2 plus 5z squared plus 5z minus 3. So that's distributing all of these guys. I combine like terms, I get 8z squared plus 
7z minus 1. I tried to factor this using the same method as last time. I get 8z minus 1 times z plus 1 equals 0. What are my two roots here? Well, 8z minus 1 equals 0 when 8z equals 1, so z is 1 eighth. And here, z is negative 1. Are these my two answers? No, this time I've got a answer that is one of my restricted values. So this is not an answer, right? This is what we call an extraneous solution. I'd like for us to try one more of these. All right, let's look at this example. Let's say I've got 2x over x minus 1 minus 8 over x plus 4 equals 2x over x plus 4. All right, let's bring everything over to one side. We've got this minus this, and then we subtract over that last term. Um, what is restricted and what is my LCD? Well, we've got restricted values of 1 and negative 4. And our LCD, we have this one factor of x minus 1. We have another factor of x plus 4. And then this last factor here um, is already included, so we don't have to put another. So we've got our LCD. We multiply this by every term here. We've got x minus 1 times x plus 4. x minus 1 times x plus 4. And x minus 1 times x plus 4. x plus 4. All this equals 0. What cancels? Well, these guys, these guys, and these guys. So we're left with 2x times x plus 4 minus 8 times x minus 1, right? Minus 2x times x plus minus, sorry, x minus 1. All that equals 0. That's what's left. I distribute. I get 2x squared plus 8x minus 8x plus 8 minus 2x squared plus 1 equals 0. We combine like terms 2x squared minus 2x squared. That reduces to 0. 8x minus 8x equals 0, so those also cancel. And we're left with 8 plus 1, so we get 9 equals 0. Is this ever true? Does 9 ever equal 0? No, right? So this guy has no solution. And that's totally fine. All right, guys, um, that's about all I have for rational equations, sort of the ins and outs. Um, we are going to talk about something next class period that is very related to rational equations. Make sure you ask me any questions you have um, so that you can sort of be prepared for the next lesson. Um, all right, guys.